This build started out for me um, about 13 years ago. I wanted to build a car similar to my favorite car, the Chrisman Coupe. And I wanted to build more of an homage to the Chrisman Coupe, a front engine car, something similar but different. Life kind of got in the way and uh, the car sat for about 10 years untouched. And as of about a year ago, uh, came back from Bonneville and decided to just go for it. I purchased this car many years back and I chopped it. I was just going to build myself a coupe. I had no intentions of building a race car at that time. And then one day out of the blue, a friend called me and he asked me if I wanted to come see the Chrisman coupe in person. They had it stored in their warehouse uh, in transition from a sale. I went and visited the car. I got to sit in it. I got to take some pictures, detailed pictures, and I just kind of decided at that point that I was going to go all the way with my car and build the car of my dreams. I came back to the shop and literally the next day I had chopped the car again. I wanted the body lines to flow differently. I pretty much knew what I wanted it to look like. I wanted to use um, both the hoods and keep the bird's mouth there that it that it formed because I envisioned my headers coming out that front engine car. Fabian's been a good friend of mine for a long time. He's been racing for a long time and has a lot of experience. He uh, goes out there and does it. He uh, sets records and has fun and he's a bean bandit. What these guys is that you have that open area because it's only mounted at the bottom and the top. Mm -hmm. So as long as you do something to keep that secure the whole time, then you know what I mean? Yeah. You want the assurance that you're contained. Yeah. So that's, that's why I don't like to use the net full length. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'd rather do like a, a little door that slides out All right. or opens out. And so you can still get in and out but that door is more solid than that, and it keeps your leg. Keeps your leg. In it's pretty spacious in there, considering. Yeah, no. Definitely. It's just getting in and out of it. But mm -hmm. I practiced that with that bar on, with my helmet on, not with the race suit yet. But um, throwing my feet over and swinging myself out, basically, right. it's not that big of a deal, really. And dude, honestly, for their bailout, it, it doesn't have to be pretty, as long yeah. as you get it done in their time. And, and basically, the biggest thing is knowing that you know where everything is in the car. Like the best bailout that I've done, like I've driven like 18 cars, and the best one was um, Foggy from Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Don't take your eyes off of me. And he's like, Where's the ignition? Where's the fire bottle? Where's the ignition? And he just like drilled me, but fucking, it was awesome. And that guy, he was the head inspector for a while, but then he ended up. Uh, yeah, I remember him. All my stuff. Is all self contained right here in this this little right piece, right area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty tight. Fire bottles are gonna go back there. Right, my water tank there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run my APA heads backwards so that the water ports are mm -hmm. right at the firewall, right. and they're coming straight back through and over into the water tank and cycling through and going back. Right. Um, it just all works better. Uh, how it works, I have a. <laughs> I got to I'll see let you know. Yeah. <laughs> if it works, I mean, I know how it's supposed to work. <clears throat> right, right, right. Um, <laughs> like for me personally, like if the water tank was lower, that means there's less risk of you getting burnt. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if, if there is a rupture and it's above you, then it's a shower. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of throwing that caution into the wind. Because, yeah, yeah, no, totally. We talked about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to do a floor above? Like that cross member and then the belly pan as well? No, it's going to go underneath <clears throat> the bars, the sealed floor, and then the belly pan. Okay, because you do have that too. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, it's just going to be underneath. Right. I have all those panels cut already. I just, I got to flip the whole chassis over. Right, 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 right. Um, that cockpit area underneath is going to get um, my electrical panel. Um, I was going to put the battery in there for a while, but I think I'm just going to throw it in the trunk. Um, it's just going to be an access area, really. Um, 
for lines. I might uh, run the water lines through there into the right. firewall. Right, right. Um, I just haven't really gotten that far yet with what exactly I'm going to put in it. Where's the cup holder going to go? Anywhere. <laughs> in my lap. In the beer holder? <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. between my legs? <laughs> the moment we've been waiting for. What? The unveiling? Yeah. It's going to be empty. Out. This is what all the people have been waiting to see. What? There's no motor in there. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I was just was trying to make it, you know. There's nothing in there. Oh, it's like Something special. Uh, yeah. I don't have everything in the solid right now. So. I have to modify my um, my oil pan, shorten it and widen it and stuff mm -hmm. to right, right. to fit in here. Mm -hmm. It's tight with space, obviously. Um, that's why I recessed those motor, motor mounts and. I had to get that Evans intake that is super flat, so my car. Right, 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 right. Oh, it's it's getting there. For sure. What do you do for exhaust? Like, where's that gonna go? So, the exhaust, they're coming out the sides right here. Uh -huh. The bird's mouth, like zoomies. Yeah, yeah. Those four guys. Right, right. Um, so basically, I have a whole exhaust system. So this will be popping out there, and then I have another header flange and header flange with tight. Oh, uh-huh. Right, right. That right. are going to that. So right, right, right. those will bolt together and then this is just the, the well, exit, exit. The yeah. muffler, if you will. Um, so that's kind of a pain in the ass. But that's the easiest way to make it work. Right. For what I gotta do. These guys. They're gonna come in here, weld on, and I'll put some more supports mm -hmm. going down. Um, essentially, it's just to hold the nose in place, to hold months. the headers, and yeah, hold everything firm. Like it's it's zeused on and it's holding pretty firm, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna shake and shimmy and shake. for sure. Um, but yeah, and then you know I'll attach everything. And zip ties, duct tape, whatever. Yeah, zip ties. <laughs> Lots of duct tape. They have this. Uh, they have this like flame colored duct tape now. <laughs> rock that stuff. Checkers. Nice. nice. Checkers. Yeah. Nice. I've seen some beach scenes too. That make me feel good. Right. Duct tape. Right. Right. <laughs> Do I have to seal the belly pan at the firewall? Yeah. I do. I would. Because it's just your, if you have a fuel leak, it can travel behind you and then it's on you. So if you seal it, or what I've done is I do like this like step deal where it can't go any further. And that way it's contained. And you have to have a couple holes to drain anything out. Yeah, Jim, Jim mentioned that, but I was like, I don't know why I have to do that. Does not make sense? Because if I wanted to run my exhaust through there, how would I do that? Yeah, you'd have to seal it. Um, <laughs> that's good to know because that's right. where I'll I'll make that transition into the that second part of the building. Right, right, right. Um, so yeah, like I do, and what I've done is like just do like a flange, and you can use that to do your Zeus buttons to hold that pit panel on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that seals that so that it won't go. And then that same, then you go the other way for the next panel. Right. Higher than I thought. So I have to build bracketry to make all this work. Gotta get focused on um, 
at this stage getting all the, the seams welded up and the body finished out and um, get the belly pan finished. Uh, I got a lot of welding to do. The belly pans were really a pain in the butt um, because they're compound curved and I had to slice into this heavy 16 gauge um, steel that I made these round corners out of because I knew I was gonna have to weld the crap out of them to get this profile right. I don't have uh, a limited amount of tools in the shop to be bending thick metal, so this is the way I had to make it work. It was a really a pain in the butt. The belly pan took me two weeks of just climbing under the car and welding upside down. It was pretty miserable. Rear louvered panel in the back for air to escape from the inside. The front lower hood was originally louvered, which uh, came in handy for me as I had to narrow it to get it to fit the profile of the Model A body. So um, that'll be a air exit for the engine heat. I'm gonna have a fan pushing air through the, the front pocket area and hopefully force it out the bottom there. I'm building the headers and I'm, getting, I'm achieving the look that I always dreamed of. The picture I painted in my head, it's, it's starting to come true now. So um, these are just mocked up in place and it, 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 the visual is coming come into life and it, it's pretty exciting at this point with these headers. I was so excited I couldn't even uh, tack on that third header <laughs> so I was just seeing it with the two. Today we're going over to Hanford Auto Supply to see Tim McMaster. Um, he's a Bonneville racer, a engine builder. Um, he's a Y-block engine builder, I think he specializes in, but he um, he's going to build me a motor for Bonneville for the race car, and um, we're going to see what we can do. Taking him um, a bunch of engine parts and He's gonna make some magic happen out of it all. So we gotta go talk about that and uh, how long it's gonna take, because we're running out of time. Guess what they make? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be gnarly. I brought everything I had. Yeah. This, this is good stuff as long as we got everything else that works with it. It, it just takes time. Yeah. Do my best. It's about getting it out there, making a show, and like you say, you got a rookie up. But uh, yeah, you know, I've I've been saying if I can just get it there, that's the goal. You know, I, I want to run it. I want to do all that stuff. But you know, I got a tech. I have to rookie. I have to do all that stupid stuff. Um, and if I don't get to do the run, I still went through tech. I still got the part there. The tech's going to be the the hardest part. What, what's the record in your class? <clears throat> One fifty six and some change. Okay, well, that's you got some leeway there. Yeah. If you're below one seventy five, they cut you some slack. If there's a yeah. uh, mistakes and of course you can't run over 150 on your rookie anyway so yeah.
Well, you know, you kind of you have to roll through the you got to roll through the punches to get to the the prize, you know. So it's supposed to be fun. Yeah. I know. I remember it being pretty stressful though. <laughs> yeah. That was moments. Yeah. I don't build motors. I built a few, but it's not my it's not my thing. So we're on a time constraint. The things I think are important are cubic inches. So we're going to spend time. We're going to stroke your crank. We'll put these caps on. That's going to take time. I'm going to do a little bit of port work on you. You're not going to get this hogged out, you know, full race port job, but it's going to breathe okay. Um, you're looking for 150 miles an hour. We're going to try to give it to you. Awesome.